Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's another awesome cast, awesome chat, talking with some of the awesome people in Pittsburgh. Please uh, check out awesomecast.net for all the past interviews and all of our recent stuff uh, for Awesome Cast, talking tech news from a steel city state of mind. Uh, subscribe to us, share it if you like it, and so much more. So with me on the, ca- on the couch in the studio this week, uh, we have our friends from Looking for Group Pittsburgh, a new place. You guys, as we're recording this, You've been open a week, right? One week now. One week. Uh, John, I'm sorry, Ed, ba- Ed Batson and John Lang. Lang? Lange? Lang. Lang. Okay. Uh, joining us uh, on here. Uh, how you doing, guys? Awesome. Uh, been having a really good week, and uh, our Kickstarter is doing really well. Everyone's really excited about the space, so it's really cool to see people actually coming in and playing games now. I guess, like, I say I, I found you guys. Well, I, I found you about a month ago, and uh, again the article came out. You guys are getting a little bit of ink, uh, haven't opened up and everything. So first, like, you know, tell us what is the concept? What is looking for group? So it's a mixed uh, co-working and gaming space. Uh, right now the gaming side is open, and for the gaming you can go in and pay by the hour to play on Xbox Ones, PlayStation Fours we use, or PCs, and uh, they're all sort of current gen uh, setups. And we have a bunch of games available that people can just play there. Or if you have your own Steam account, own Xbox account, whatever, uh, you can just log in, download your games, and play with people right next to you. We have um, five PS4s, five Xbox Ones, where people can just sit next to each other, play games, and 10 PCs all in a long row. You can just sit there and play with your friends instead of being online, you know, far away and not being able to see him very well. That's awesome. So, so you guys are, it sounds like you guys are bringing back uh, the land party idea that we used to have right. back in the day, right? Right. Right. Um, a lot of our stuff that we want to do and that we're doing is really land, uh, land centric. So, uh, specifically for PC stuff, uh, things like Artemis, which is a bridge commander kind of simulation, like you're on a Star Trek ship, and there are five stations that all have their own UI, their own sort of game that they're playing, engineering and science and navigation and weapons, and you're all working together to do something, but all being in the same place means that you are all able to yell at each other and, right. and do stuff. So uh, I'm pulling this up. So this is like a Star Trek party game? Yes. Is that, is that right? It is awesome. <laughs> oh, I mean, so, and, and of course, the people we, we, we poured up here are completely Star trek out, ready to go for this. Right. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool game, and it's one that not a lot of people have heard of, um, and that's sort of the other aspect of it. We want to um, we're we're really looking toward community and like pulling in people to play new games, games they haven't seen before, um, things like Artemis or Speedrunners or or a bunch of smaller games that people wouldn't normally see sitting at a GameStop or what have you. Mm-hmm. So I know, I know this is, um, it, was, it seems like there's new gaming things coming up all over the place uh, around the Pittsburgh area, the greater Pittsburgh area. We've talked with our uh, friends at the uh, Coin Op Hall of Fame mm-hmm. uh, in, in uh, up around, uh, up north of the city, up around Hopewell. Um, I, is that, did you get kind of spurred? What, what was the dawn of this? Is it because you saw so many other people doing this or this was like a concept you guys had had first off? Um, I think it's, it's one of those things that everyone who plays games has in the back of their mind that they are like, we should build a gaming place someday. Um, (laughs) I think that everyone, everyone thinks that. And so, um, we've always kind of kicked it around in the back of our minds. I'd also been kicking around doing a co-working space in Brookline. I live in Brookline and, and have wanted somewhere to go that's nearby, not on the East end. And I'm with you. I've wanted something in Beachview <laughs> for the longest time, and now I'm going to Allentown, which isn't horrible, but still I got to cross 51. You know? Right, right, right. <laughs> can't I just... 50, you can't just like pop over the hill and, right, and do it. Right, right. Um, I'm spoiled by the coffee shop right at the top of the hill over here. I, <laughs> exactly. I completely am. It's just exactly. like everything is right there. I see the light. I hear the train. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and uh, and, and in Brookline, we've got Cannon Coffee. It's now under new ownership Cafe du Noir, I think. Um, but... But yeah, it's the same thing. We have this awesome community up in Brookline, which is right next to you here. And mm-hmm. um, just I wanted to do something there. 
And we started looking at the numbers early in the summer. And we're like, oh, this is actually possible to do. Um, Brookline is just starting to sort of come out of a pretty bad funk. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, the boulevard was just redone. Everything's kind of nice now, but there's no shops other than like some food places, coffee shop. And so we're hoping that we can sort of anchor in some new new places uh, be the start of that. We have an interesting uh, neighborhood thing that happens here because I think obviously Beachview up here, we're getting very neighborhood guys if you're not very local into the South Hills or anything, but uh, Beachview here, like we're tucked between Banksville Road and West Liberty, and I feel like if you don't have a reason to come up here, you're never going to. Yet, how many people pass through here on the train? Now, you guys are even more tucked away and have a very kind of, again, kind of resurgent, vibrant neighborhood throughway of the main street, I guess, kind of happening. Right. Um, so we're right off of 19 where people go in and out of the Liberty tunnels. Right. Um, so if you're on 19, you just turn on to Brookline Boulevard and drive for a mile and a half and you're at our place or maybe a mile and you're Mm -hmm. right there. Right at the McDonald's. Yes. Turn right at the McDonald's and you're, (laughs) you'll, you'll be here. Um, it, but yeah, you're right. Yes. Left if you're coming out of the tubes. (laughs) Um, but it, you're right. Brookline isn't a place that a lot of people knew about up until, I don't know, the taco stand opened, uh, Las Palmas <laughs> opened and now people in, know about moved in up here too. I had yes. my cow tongue a couple months ago. Yes. Great. Great. <laughs> so you don't even have to go that far to get it, exactly. but that's really what got people to notice Brookline again. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, so Ed, you haven't talked much. I want to make sure we're talking. So what's your role in all this? Um, I'm, I'm an equal owner. I will be the face. I'm I'm the sole employee, so I'll be in the store uh, while everyone else is. I mean, <clears throat> everyone else is going to be in from time to time, but it's going to be my primary focus mm-hmm. so that I can mm-hmm. really focus on it and, you know, be a steady face for people to know, for people to meet, to... <laughs> uh, to, to, to conversate with, uh, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so you know, on the gaming side, of course, but uh, but it's also a a co working space. Now, are you looking more for like a game development community, or it's just a place to go that that's kind of cool and fun? Or so it's it's a little of both. We'd like to um, reach out to game devs because I think we offer some special things that other places don't, uh, especially having the community of people that come and play games all the time. Um, we already have um, one local developer who was looking to have, um, he's working on a game that he wants to have people play through and give him some feedback. So installing it on our machines and then people can come in oh, and play cool. through it and give him some direct feedback because he's from the neighborhood and this is, you know, he's ready now to have sort of the public look at it, but not necessarily ready to give out steam keys or anything like that. Right. And so he's uh, looking to maybe do that. And that's sort of the kind of thing we want to be able to do is have um, have developers have access to our normal community and be able to have them play their games, talk to them, get feedback and everything. So you're equally kind of targeting the gaming community and the development community so they can kind of work hand in hand. Right. Right. I think it's I think there's a whole lot of overlap there. Obviously, Almost everyone that develops games is playing games and lots and lots of people that play games are interested in the development of games and being able to see new games before they're out and give feedback on games and feel like they've had a part of building a game. Mm -hmm. So I think bringing them together totally makes sense. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, but again, you, you not ever, you don't have to be a developer to come in. So anybody can move in just if you need a, a, a regular space. And and that's separated from from the gaming areas? Yeah, that's uh, separated from the gaming area. The gaming area is open from 2 until 10 most days. Mm -hmm. Um, If you are in the co-working side, you can come in 24-7 access. Um, But we have big double doors separating them. Uh, The sound is pretty isolated. And Mm -hmm. even still, you know, it's not until 3 or 4 when kids actually start coming in. So it's normally later in the day. Um, So everything is separated off and... uh, you don't notice it very much whenever you're in the co-working side, you mm-hmm. don't really notice it unless there's a lot of people and a tournament or something like that going on. Right. Right. 
Well, it's not too different than a co-working space in general. It gets a little loud. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed in my first month there. Um, and, and it sounds like it's a, it seems like it'd be a different vibe than a normal co-working space yeah. with a bunch of startups. Yeah, it's it's definitely a different vibe. And um, it's, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot less, um, you know, angry frustration that sometimes happens at co-working places. <laughs> like you're, you, one person's having a bad day and everyone else kind of is like kind of quiet and like avoiding that. Whereas whenever you have a bunch of people having a great time outside, even if you're having a bad day, you go out for a walk and you go walk past some people having a good time. You maybe stop and play a game for a second and like mm -hmm. clear your head. And it's easier to do that there. I feel a little bit. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so tell me, you mentioned the Kickstarter you guys did. You, you, you started this at the beginning of the summer? The Yes. And you're already open? Yes. That's amazing. That So uh, that is mostly Ed and our friends mm -hmm. helping us out. Um, we had some great help from uh, some contractor friends, uh, awesome help from a uh, friend who's great at, at drywall finishing. He's ridiculous. That's great. Um, a friend who just knows everyone and paints and just so many people came and helped us that mm -hmm. we were able to really blow through and get open really fast. And, and then you did have a Kickstarter. I can't believe I missed the Kickstarter when it came through. Well, it's still uh, up. Actually. Oh, it's, it's actually still up and going. Okay. I'll right. maybe, maybe I caught it in the first few days. Um, uh, so what are you guys doing with the Kickstarter? Uh, so the Kickstarter is we opened with as much stuff as we felt comfortable uh, spending our capital on because we wanted to make sure we could stay open for a reasonable amount of time and like actually build a, a customer base rather than blowing it all on opening and then closing in two months because we don't have the ability to pay for anything. Right. Um, so the Kickstarter is to uh, expand early, basically. So um, buying more machines, buying more consoles and and expanding to the area what we can offer gaming and co-working. Um, the first 2000 was to add a couple of PCs, which we hit. The next thousand was to do something for the community, which is um, a sponsorship for 10 of the uh, local kids to go through a Raspberry Pi class. Uh, we've awesome. hit that. And so there are going to be um, 10 kids that we let go through the Pi class where it's build your own retro console. Um, where they'll learn how to install an OS, connect to it, upload, download files to their Raspberry Pi, and they'll leave with a Pi controller and everything so they can take it home and go play with it. And that came from the Kickstarter. That's awesome. Um, after that, it's going to be just a little bit more expansion and then really what the community wants. We don't want to have too formulated of a plan on how we want to grow. We want to know what people want and grow that direction. Wow. So, so, you know, it seems like you're very community focused. How, what's been the reaction from the community for this? There's not, not like, oh, there's a gosh darn arcade moving <laughs> in or anything like that. Um, everyone has been very positive, uh, very excited. Uh, they're all excited that the kids have somewhere to hang out, which is something I'm kind of excited about. Um, I live in Brookline. I know that if I were a kid in Brookline, I'd be really bored if I didn't have a car. There's a big cannon. <laughs> there is a big cannon. We've shot by the big cannon. So. We can see it from our front door. So that's where we are. There yes. you are. You find the cannon, you found us. Look for us. We're by the big cannon. It's yeah. really easy. Take the left at McDonald's or the right and stop at the cannon. You're right. good. You're just, you're, you're, you have the best directions in the world, really. So that's amazing. Uh, so, so the Raspberry Pi uh, classes, is that something you're going to do ongoing beyond the, the yes. Kickstarter? So yes. that's awesome. That's so awesome. that's going to be one of our regular classes. Um, we're going to offer some other classes depending on what, uh, people want. I know we've had people stop in and ask if we do a, how to build your own PC class. That's a little more difficult cause it's more expensive for all those parts. Mm -hmm. Um, but certainly that's something that we could look into if there are a few people that wanted to know how to do it and brought their own components. Sure. We, I, we could totally do a class. I could see that. you doing cause, um, Oh, what? I can't remember which one it is. I think, I think <clears throat> construction junction does this in the, in the bike shop and, 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 uh south side does this where they do like a we will teach you how to fix your bike mm -hmm. kind of thing like i could see right. a computer kind of version of that right 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 um and then so we got educational licenses from unity which is a good. game good. development engine that basically everyone uses it's good for cell phones ipads a lot pcs of, yeah a lot Xbox, of everything a lot a lot of iphone games i play I, I, yes. I, it's either that or epic and usually the epic ones yeah. are way higher end Yes. Um, so that's awesome. I yeah. And so um, they have a whole 
program that they recommend for if you're going to do like classroom teaching, which is not necessarily where we're going to go with it, but we're going to do some intro to Unity type of courses because I think that's something that a lot of um, people would be interested in. And then they would have a base of people that they could talk to of, hey, I saw you took this Unity class. Let's work on something together. Cool. So, so not like a certification, but just like a kind of a community based thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm digesting all this. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there in my backyard. That's amazing. That's, it's so great. Um, and this is, I don't, again, like you said, we don't see anything like this in the Southwest. I don't see anything in the Mount Lebanon, Dormont, anything like that kind of uh, geared towards this thing. There was a company, I know there was a tech company in, in, in Dormont for a bit. The video house I worked with was in Mount Lebanon. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of technology based stuff or, or community like this, um, or maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I don't see it up here on the hill. So I think everyone's focused focusing on the East end where, right. where Google's going in. Um, I don't think there's anything preventing it from happening in the South Hills. No, I think it's just, that's how it's been so far. And maybe we will be able to change it somewhat is sort of my hope is the, you know, everyone thinks that, Oh, if you want coworking or you want technology, you go to the East end. Well, if we are around and we're starting to offer that people start thinking, Oh, well, the South Hills is also a place that you can do this and maybe, uh, mm -hmm. other places will open up. I know a lot of people have uh, been trying to talk me into going to places like the beauty shop out there in East Liberty. I'm just like, I don't, I, I work myself. I don't want to commute. That's the point. <laughs> right. And to go right. across the city seems like uh, kind of uh, against what I'm trying yeah. to do. And, here. and the thing is they're great locations. Mm -hmm. they're, they oh, have they're amazing. great offerings. Absolutely. They're, they're wonderful places. They're just not perfectly located for everyone. Right. I, I feel the same way where I, I wouldn't want to drive out to there just to work. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, why I opened a co-working place so close to where I live is so I can now walk to work. That's kind of nice. And, and that's one thing I'm seeing, you know, I mentioned work hard before and they're a great co-working space up in Allentown. Mm -hmm. Again, a neighborhood that didn't have a lot going on. Um, and uh, maybe has a little further to come than, than Brookline is at this point. But I notice a lot of people are local, you know, and there's mm -hmm. not a lot of other opportunities there up, up on the hill like that. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. And, I, and I'm looking forward to see what this kind of brings to this area. I mean, you know, maybe we'll get something in Beachview too. But in the meantime, <laughs> I might be playing with video games with you guys on the regular. Uh, so uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, so uh, so the model on the um, let, let's roll back to video games. Just let's, sure. get, let's go to the fun part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think all of it's fun. But but for the video game side of things, um, uh, what so so you guys are kind of introducing new video games. You guys are kind of bringing back the land party um, um, aspect of, of, of things. Um, what do you guys think about, uh, you know, again, it seems like there's a bunch happening around town. Mm -hmm. You know, we just mm -hmm. had a big gaming expo come through yeah. this replay FX. I know yeah, some, of the, awesome. some of my friends from instacoinedbegin.com went down there. I wish I freaking went to that oh, thing and seen you, the pictures. You should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> could have seen us as gang beasts yes <laughs> what's this uh we we were all dressed up as uh gang beasts it's another oh, game that we have down there that not a lot of people have heard about mm -hmm. um it's like it pro wrestling if everyone were drunk sort of <laughs> you just have no control over your character but you're trying to throw them out of a out of a ring or off of the stage and like it's like you're drunken mascots sort of shoving each other around but it's oh i'm loading this thing up <laughs> <laughs> i hope i got the right one gangbeast.com i'm kind of uh, afraid going to that <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to be loading um that, that sounds right up my alley actually so gang beast uh yeah Shocker. it's by uh by double fine and oh, uh, nice it's it's a really good ridiculous game it's a little glitchy right now um but that also means that you know we're around and we can figure it out when it glitches out on people mm -hmm. but yeah that that would be it I don't know, i'm obsessed with finding out what gang beasts are i'm sorry <laughs> so uh so you dressed as these yes yeah, yes yeah. they they dressed up as as the mascots and went around they had this big um inflatable uh ring with a wrecking ball that um that we got in and the four of us were all dressed up in our outfits fighting and sweating to death oh, but it was it was a lot of fun and there were even people there that recognized what we were were yeah. which if, was super cool if you're on the audio it is safe to go to gangbeast.com it's not what you would suspect it is and uh <laughs> and uh and it's just like these unicolored kind of uh outfits and they're just doing goofy ridiculous stuff 
uh, up there. So this, I love this because this is the whole. That's why I love like digging into Steam. You know, uh, uh, some of the guys on the on the other show are like, ah, PC gaming, whatever. But this is where the fun, weird stuff is happening. It's happening on PS4 and the indie side too. But you're going to get more of this on the PC side, right? Uh, you're definitely going to get these weird one-offs on mm-hmm. the PC a lot more. It's not like Gang Beasts can sell the two hundred fifty thousand or five hundred thousand that is needed to make a console release successful. Right. But on PC, you can have one person sitting there for years making something ridiculous, and if they enjoyed themselves making it and could live their life, then Mm -hmm. you get to play the game they made. Much like uh, how development's been very open on iOS and Android platforms. Yes. So it's that that kind of open thing. You don't have to pay the tax to Microsoft (laughs) to to put the thing out. I don't think people realize how much like Microsoft takes off the top. Oh, yeah. In order to do something. Same with Sony. Yeah. Um, There's there's a huge amount of money and and testing going into making console games. Right. That, I mean, consoles are also people generally will buy whatever games come out on a console too. So there's, you know, the either side of it uh, that you can look at, whether it's too expensive to start or you're guaranteed some amount of sales. Uh, But on PC, there's just so much available. That's just weird and fun and unique that, uh, that I really like. So you guys have been open a week. Um, You've had people in playing games, doing Mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, what's the what's the, the the biggest surprise for you guys so far? In in you know people come in and what they're playing, what they're doing. Uh, train Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that before. <laughs> what is it? Yes, uh, we have a line for Train yeah, Simulator. Yeah, <laughs> I, I turns out I had a copy of it. A friend of mine years ago sent it as a joke mm-hmm. for Christmas, so I've left it as a gift in my Steam. And someone came in with a copy of it on disc. And they're like, I want to install this. And the, the disc copy is just basically a key vehicle for Steam. You still have to sign up for Steam. And he right. didn't know his Steam account. Right. He didn't know how to do it or anything. And I said, you know what? I have a copy of this somewhere. So I just gifted it to uh, an account I created for uh, LFG and set it up for him. And he was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And I was like, awesome. Cool. I'm glad you're having a great time. And then other kids would come in and stare at it and be like, I need a turn on that. I've never seen that game before. <laughs> Nothing's bloody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there's just, I think there's something, I don't know if it's genetic or what causes someone to be a train person and just love trains. And like, you know, there are people that go out and film trains as they come by and look for special trains and know yeah, yeah. all of the like very specifics about a train. But train simulator is built for people that are like that. And there are people like that in Brookline that love to come through and play the game. When nobody wants to have a beach field, we got our own train. <laughs> yes. We got a train set right up there. And it's loud every time it passes by. It's, I, I'm pulling up the trailer for Train Simulator to see if uh, how epic the train simulator. Like, I, I'm thinking, like, I guess I'm thinking rail yard cap, Railroad Tycoon or something. But this oh. is like a full-on, this is a full-on 3D craziness? Or I'm just getting in the trailer mode here. Like, Yeah, it is, you set up your train and what you're pulling and your engine and you sit on the train and you control the throttle and the brake and you can go and set up your lines with how they're going to transfer the train and everything to make sure it's okay you have to make sure that you're not going too fast on like the two percent grade the the trailer looks like polar express it's crazy (laughs) (laughs) what is happening here and your dials and and all kinds of stuff and wow that's amazing Yeah. yeah it it's very thorough in its simulation, um, it's not a game that I would choose to play on the regular, but I definitely respect that it is very complete and there are people that love it. That's great. That's great. So, so like I said, I'm still, I'm still amazed and, and just wowed by how quick you guys spun this up. And it looks like it, it, it looks like it's really together. Um, and uh, what was, what was the hardest part in the process of, of, of making this thing a reality? There were uh, there were some hard building parts, which is well documented <laughs> on your social media, by the way. Yes, I like yes. there's like there's like building videos. Uh, if you look at the Kickstarter video, like you guys just put like the and was this, this is the initial like introduction uh, before you build everything. Yeah, out this at is the end of this. so this part of the video is a walkthrough and and actually possibly making the Kickstarter video mm-hmm. was the hardest part that we actually yeah. had because that took the <laughs> longest. Because it started from the time we started till whenever we finished because we kept saying we need to do this and then not doing it. Um, 
But yeah, this is whenever we started out and we had just planned everything out with tape mm -hmm. and marked everything off with tape. There was still a walk-in freezer in the back that we had to completely dismantle and pull out. It was a nine by 13 by eight foot freezer. Um, uh, you can see in the back there, there's this gigantic butcher block table because this used to be uh, Marty's Market. And so that was their their butcher block that they used. It had been sand down, sanded down hundreds of times probably. But it still weighed, I don't know, 500 pounds? I made 800 on it. 800. It was so heavy. So heavy I couldn't lift it to gauge how heavy it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was too heavy for us to lift, and we had to get a bunch of people around it to get it out of the building. Wow. Um, awesome. Awesome. So the Kickstarter is still going on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, what, what, wait, let's, let's, let's do a, a check in. Where are you at with the Kickstarter? How far are you actually have beat your $2,000 goal. So right. it is happening. Uh, you know, you, you, you're upgraded right. and, yeah. and, uh, and everything. Uh, so, so what do you have? Do you have stretch goals on here? Or? We have some stretch goals on there for, like I said, the first stretch goal we met as well, which is the sponsorships for the raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, I don't know them off the top I of my head right okay here. we got a half yeah, a pod at yeah. six thousand yeah so um what we're calling we have a, a cluster of eight consoles all sort of back to back mm -hmm. and so you can do things like if you're doing uh destiny fire teams and you want to do two fire teams back to back or you're doing halo uh when halo 5 comes out we're going to have tournaments for halo and you could theoretically have four on four with everyone back to back um playing against each so other so that's just like video game high school exactly <laughs> <laughs> which is on netflix by the way i recommend it to you, you geeks out there if, if, if you're listening to this you probably will like video game high school right okay. <laughs> um so so that's sort of what we're calling a pod is eight of those consoles with chairs tv and everything um so the next one is building out another one we have room for a second full cluster of eight mm -hmm. and um right now really the the people like both they like the consoles a lot they also like the pcs a lot there isn't a lot of preference of one over the other which we were kind of expecting whenever we started out we were expecting oh all of the consoles will be used all the time and the pcs will be sometimes or we'll be able to like start getting people onto the pc whenever they see the mm -hmm. consoles are full but mm -hmm. that's not the case at all people are really familiar with minecraft mm -hmm. people want to browse the internet and play around with stuff and People play on the PCs just as much as they do on the consoles. I wonder if you'll get a thing because I mean, uh, as cheap as PCs are, I think mo most people are getting the two three hundred dollar ones, and mm -hmm. they don't have gaming computers. And mm -hmm. maybe you guys will be a really good outlet for. Yeah, I want to go play Crisis the way it's supposed to look. You yeah, know? It, it, yeah. That, that's it. Seems like a good outlet for that. Yeah, we have um, we have some beefy computers in there, and we actually get calls saying, you know, what kind of computer is it? And you know, it's a we've got an NVIDIA ninety seven. Or 970 in there for the video card decent specs everywhere else and they're like oh cool i can go come in and play and and really what i wanted was to make sure that when fallout 4 comes out you can play fallout 4 and play it with mods in mm -hmm. a year whenever those come out because that's um that's sort of how i play fallout and i think that it's a single player game but sitting next to someone playing fallout and being like oh look at this cool thing i found is really fun mm-hmm Awesome, awesome. So, are you gonna do like a like Fallout launch party or anything um, like that? Yeah, yeah. We're we're looking at a few events. We don't have everything set in stone yet. Mm -hmm. um, the next few things we're going to be doing are um, for sure our Halo launch party, where we're gonna do a tournament the day it launches. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do a rock band. Is that is that yeah? Rock the band or, launch today, so. Yeah, so we're going to do like a build your own band and have sort of like a, a tournament, a, a battle of the bands with I, Rock Band. I got to tell you what, I, we were personally very deep with Rock Band Guitar Hero. We got all this stuff upstairs and it's just the upkeep on that stuff is tough. Yes. And then like, oh man, I guess, okay, we have the old guitars. Maybe I can get that keyboard thing they have this time, like that whole thing. Yeah. The drums. It would be really nice to just go play some play Rock yeah. Band. That's not freaking Dave and Buster's. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so we're going to have a rock band, um, party. We're definitely planning something for War fallout. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other events that we're looking at is a, uh, I don't know if you've ever played Kerbal space program, but, um, it is a, it turns out it's an amazing game about launching, uh, little guys into space. 
<laughs> and doing your own space program. Uh, I hadn't played it until this week, but uh, The Martian just came out and I knew about Kerbal and had seen it some and I thought it'd be a great thing to do a tournament with. So we're going to set up um, a tournament in the next few weeks and um, give people some time to come in and learn to play the game because it's not easy uh, to launch your rocket and actually get it to do what you want. Uh, but it is, uh, <laughs> this is the, this is the time for a game like this with between finding water on Mars and now you can right. launch, you can launch your alien to the water on Mars. Apparently, <laughs> exactly. According to this, this is pretty good. <laughs> right. And, and there are all kinds of, um, cool things with it, but what's the neatest part about it is it's pretty heavy on the simulation. It's not, you know, NASA accurate or anything, but dealing with orbital, uh, the orbital physics and trying to get things to line up and dock and all that right, right, takes right. some real planning and math. And I think like, these are the kinds of things I really like to do because I like to get kids into this and trick them into learning really complex things because they're having a really good time with a game. And so I think this will be really cool to sit, have kids like, well, you just build some rockets and watch them blow up. It's kind of funny, but then you start learning how everything works and start learning that there's fun math behind it. This has come a long way from uh, sitting there playing Oregon Trail on the Apple IIe <laughs> back in the day for me in, in school. Yes. So, I mean, it, like, especially, I, I mean, I don't even know how well schools are keeping up with technology like this. They would uh, they would have, I don't know, number crunchers or whatever the heck they have these days. Um, it sounds like it, 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 this is a really cool kind of resource to extend that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're, we're hoping to... We're train simulators. <laughs> we're train hey, simulators. We're train simulators. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, the people from the local library, we have an awesome library up in Brookline, awesome. have awesome. Uh, been, uh, have come down and talked to us. And we're looking at um, doing something with them to help with after school programs or, you know, whatever kind of assistance we can do to figure out, because they have a lot of technology stuff they want to teach, right. but they don't necessarily have the knowledge of what they want to do. Right. And so, you know, help them out and figure out what they can do to um, move forward. Is that a Carnegie up there? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, because I know up in Beach, well, they just reopened the one in Beach Street. It's a beautiful building up there. And um, I know, I remember I saw on the list like a couple years ago when I first started going up there, they had like Wee Night. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they're they're definitely into that. And we've done some programs with them for Podcast Pittsburgh down at Main Branch. And they're huge on that kind of stuff. That's, that's awesome. Co completely awesome to see. Yeah, and, and they have, like, Minecraft on their computers. They do Pokemon Night, things like that. But um, they have kids that want to branch out more and not necessarily know who to push them to to be able to learn more, whether it's in Unity, doing a Raspberry Pi, whatever. And so sort of partnering with them and being able to offer classes that, like, these kids who are really interested in advancing um, – being able to offer them classes and things that they can do is really exciting. You know, this is a question that I can't remember if I posed it last week or, or, or not to, to my gaming friends, but you guys are definitely into the kind of educational things. I don't even know if you have, we use over there, but we do Mar great Mario maker. Is that a good tool for kids thinking about game design or mm -hmm. get them into it? I think that if you, wanted to treat it as game design you could mm -hmm. but just by itself it's kind of fun in a just see what happens kind okay. of way and we have a couple kids that love it and come yeah. in and play it all the time um i think it's a a really cool game but i think that um for a learning to do game design um there are a couple of things that would be nice if it told you mm -hmm. um sort of like gave you the jump heights of Mario. So Mario has sort of like two default jump heights. That... So you're not like putting this impossible thing right in the middle of the board. Right. So because it, it leaves it up to you to test the level and see if it's possible rather than it saying this is the maximum distance you can put between two blocks and still have Mario be able to make it kind of thing. So um, I think, though, that Mario Maker mixed with a little bit of extra information would be great. And then getting some feedback on it would be really good for kids learning how to do it because it's a great way to build levels and test your levels out. That's good. That's good. But it's, it's, it's better than, I think it's a good introduction, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
Uh, that's great. Because I, 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 I haven't had my hands on it yet, but everybody freaking is getting it on this show. So <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, again, like, like, like it seems like a good teaching tool, a good starting point. It's like the Raspberry Pi of, of your Wii U or you know, right. a little bit, you know, that you can dive in a little bit. Um, I mean, I remember back in the day, uh, Mario Paint. Yes. being a thing that people could yes. get in and have a mouse and draw and not have to have a computer. You know, I thought it was a great introductory to maybe something more yeah. creative like that. I, I think it's very much like Mario Paint, but better because it lets you share mm-hmm. your levels, which is really great. And um, it gives you more feedback than Mario Paint does. Good. Mario Paint was <laughs> well, like, well, you no. could paint and you could listen to it, but yeah. you weren't like, you didn't have a goal at the end. Right, like, right. You could do a picture, which is great. It was and, a canvas. Right. It was a canvas, but it wasn't necessarily goal oriented where this is goal oriented, which helps a lot of people when they're trying to learn things. Although now Mario Paint kind of resurfaced a bit now that you can make YouTube videos of those crazy songs. Yes. So <laughs> yes, that's yes. that's been very helpful for that. <laughs> awesome. So anything else coming up? You got some events and stuff. Uh, let's let's <clears throat> look the, the bottom line. People want to go check out stuff. They want to be a part of it. Where do they find out? Um, or maybe they want to talk to you if they want to start something similar in their neighborhood, wherever they might be. So our Facebook is right now the best place to check. Uh, we're updating our website in the next day or three to um, be able to get more information out. We have a blog. It's blog.lfgpgh.com um, where we've put information on our um, on some of the stuff we're doing. And mostly it's been the information on our game jam that we've run. We've done one so far. Um, but really show up in the shop. That's a great way to come get us. Ed or I will almost always be there, uh, aside from right now, because we're here. <laughs> um, you had to act, it was a like conversing. We, you guys actually had to, uh, uh, find somebody to cover the shop. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we could get both of you here, which yeah. I really appreciate. Thank you so much for hopping the hill over, yeah. uh, for this. Please check them out. Ed, you got anything to end on? say hi to this guy uh (laughs) smiling at the front desk ed (laughs) (laughs) to be fair i think ed is just trying to prevent himself from getting too excited about talking about something because it won't stop and so he knows he knows that happens that's fine that's fine (laughs) that's fine what are you playing every day ed uh i'm hooked on carball right now man it's so fun (laughs) (laughs) awesome go check him out lfgpgh.com it's an awesome thing happening here in the south hills of pittsburgh uh go go participate or find out find out more or, or go make something or, you know there's so many options there uh check them out uh, check out all the interviews over at awesomecast.net if you enjoyed this we got some other video game stuff talked with our friends at the coin up hall of fame up there uh up there north of the city and uh so much more geeky and awesome stuff in pittsburgh and beyond um stuff like clamor be, be somebody out there uh please check it out please subscribe to everything thank you to our awesome guests over on the couch thank you so much guys you have been our awesome Thanks. audience have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.